In this video, we're going to go over the latest Starfield news and we're going straight into it. Reviewers now have access to Starfield and should be releasing their reviews on August 31st. Active Twitter user Paris posted that he gained access to Starfield to review and hasn't posted for an entire day. Is this indicative of how great the game is? We'll have to see. Starfield official trailer officially released with a few shots at the end I've never seen before. I only found this on Twitter for some reason. If you'd like to see it, you can check it out in the description of this video. When the game released to the reviewers, it was rated 4.9 out of 5. Just a few hours ago, J-Dub on Twitter shared a screenshot of the current rating on Xbox as 3 out of 5. It seems to be getting mixed reviews. In my opinion, I think it's too early to rate the game unless players are running into bugs right away. If there are bugs, I believe these will be patched out by the September 1st launch. The game amounts to 139.84 gigabytes on Xbox Game Pass. Also, not too long ago, Bethesda did a Q&A that revealed much more information about the game. Here are the important pieces. You can get houses in all major cities within the game. You can also obtain some as a reward from quests only. For those that pick the kid stuff trait, your parents' visage will be based on your character's appearance. The traits and backgrounds you select has impact on how you experience the game. But if you select the anonymous background and no trait, you'll be able to experience the game without traits and background impacts. Certain items in the games are considered contraband and you'll need to smuggle past security ships that orbit the major settlements. This suggests that when you jump to a major settlement, you'll have security ships orbiting it to scan your ship before flying down. There are special modules you can purchase to hide these items. This suggests that there is a possibility of more modules like this that haven't been revealed to us yet that acts as a special ability or utility for your ship. I wonder if this also applies to outposts as well. Prices of commodities are fixed but prices can change based on skills you choose. You can go to jail if you commit a crime or pay a fine when you're arrested. You can even resist arrest and try to escape. This suggests that there will be a sleep mechanic that fast forwards time to speed up your prison sentence. I assume you can do this outside of the prison as well, perhaps your home or outpost. Granted, you have a bed there. There are civilizations, governments, and laws. The universe simulation only runs while you're playing the game. This means mining operations or trade routes will not continue to run while you're not playing the game. All playable factions can be completed independently. This means you can work with the United Colonies while doing a quest line for Crimson Fleet. The way you interact with the Crimson Fleet will be through you being a United Colony System defense agent sent undercover to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet. Whether you'll betray the UC or Crimson Fleet will be up to you. It will be difficult to play the game as a complete pacifist. There will be three primary religions in the game. The first one is Sanctum Universum, only a few decades old but has gained a lot of prominence. They believe that God is out there somewhere in the universe and that humanity's ability to travel the stars brings them closer to God. Next is the Enlightened. They are atheists that focus on humanitarian and community work. They believe that life is something every person has to take responsibility for so that if we want the world to be a better place, we have to do it. And lastly, the Great Serpent. They didn't elaborate on this one. There are over 20 named characters who can join your crew. Four of them are from the constellation and have the most story and interaction with the player. But all the named characters have their own background and can follow you around and carry your stuff. This suggests that we don't have immediate access to our global inventory if there is one. You'll probably need to get back to your ship or outpost or even home to store your stuff. I also assume you need a cargo ship to physically move larger quantities of items from one location to another. The crew members that we hire to work at our outposts need to be paid up front. Through speech challenges and traits, you can reduce the cost. They decided to stay with a one-time payment as opposed to salaries because they wanted to minimize the amount of things a players will need to keep track of as it is a massive game. I think this is a great choice. Me personally, if there are too many things to worry about, it turns me off from the game. Crew skills are static, meaning they don't level up, but skill levels will depend on companions you choose as they all have varying skill levels. You can hire characters that are good with rifles to follow you around and watch your back or someone whom is an expert in isodynamics that will increase the jump range when assigned to a ship. Mechs will not be playable in game. For more Starfield content like this, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.